7.30, we're going to call the meeting to order. Resolve that the agenda for March 5th, 2019, regular meeting of council be received. If I can have a mover on that one. Second. Discussion. All in favor? And a confirmation of the minutes result the minutes of February 19th, 2019. Council meeting be received and approved. Jason, second. Discussion? Carried. Delegations tonight, I understand. We have none. We have one on the list, but they have canceled. So nothing on that. Moving on. Um, reception of petitions. I have nothing on that one. Moving on to communications. Six. Um, new subdivision <coughs> application municipal relations. 6.1 new subdivision application. That's just for us to review. Any any feedback or anything on that, Mr. Poole? Uh, no, nope. just for council's consideration. What we would follow our guidelines. Any further discussion on that one? This moment, or look yeah. at it on your own time. I mean, the, the new application. Mm -hmm. Just for our information to have a look at, I don't think that there's anything we need to do with it. I don't think there's anything we can do. Yeah. We get them when they fill out. Yeah. As far as I know. Um, moving on, superintendent, superintendent of works. Be resolved that the superintendent. Of works report be received. Mr. Council Morio, second. Action question on Councillor. Hang on, we gotta get it to the table first. Sorry, Councillor. Um, Gloria seconds it. Now we can have discussion. Um, on your report there, uh, summary of weeds and fees for the landfill. Are we? Looking at or looking at reviewing the, the fees or, or is that what's the what's the story behind that? Yeah, just taking a look at okay. uh, what we made last year, where we spent our time. Okay. <clears throat> Any further discussion? All in favor? Resolved that the management meeting management meeting minutes be received. Moved by Councillor Friesen. Second by Councillor Gloria. Any discussion? I see on the February fourteenth minutes there was only three people at the meeting. Was there? Uh, no, Terry was there also, but. Uh, Usually it seems like there's probably close to, close to like 10 people at the evening. Yeah, Ken was sick. Okay. Uh, Cocott was away. Or no, sorry, Ken Cocott was away with babies. But uh, Darren Harvey was away. But uh, Terry was there. His notes just didn't make it. It was a uh, change. Those, uh, I believe you guys commented on uh, Terry's notes on the management meeting last night. That was due to the invoice that we got from Summit. It was just poorly worded and misunderstood. Councillor Light. Just a, a question. I see one of the possibilities uh, is the, uh, the closure of or the cessation of school rentals and fees and charges on the February the 14th, 28th report. Uh, as a parent, Person very much in favor of the pool. We're not there yet. Uh, pardon? We're not there yet. I thought we're on management reports. No, that's recreation to me. 
Pardon? That's Recreation Committee, February 28th. Yeah. Okay. Well, I thought we were there. Oh, we weren't here. Haven't quite got that far. Any further discussion with the management minutes from February 7th and 14th? All in favor? All, any opposed? Carried. Moving on to 7.22, the fire chief report. It resolved the fire chief report be received. Mover, Councillor Morio, second. Councillor Delorier, any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion's carried. <coughs> 7.3, Council and CAO reports. CAO first. Uh, scheduling interviews for the quick position. And, uh, yeah, there's, I guess everything else is kind of standard. You guys know what we're to do. Compiling the, the garbage minutes with Darren, or the garbage and recycling proposals with Darren, and uh, trying to find time to finish that RFP, but getting close. I'm just trying to get things off my desk and moving. I don't have anything too specific to report to you guys, but just carrying on. Councillor Friesen. Um. I uh, went to a community care meeting last night and they're busy uh, working out their budget. They all seem to know what they're doing, which is super. Um, on the 25th, Councillor White and I and uh, Mr. Wolchuk went over to Westside Lodge and uh, presented Grace Livingston with a plaque from the province and from the town. She's a uh, volunteer of 67 years for the hospital auxiliary. She's uh, in poor health and uh, I think she was very thrilled to have us all there. And some of the members from the uh, hospital auxiliary came also and her daughter and uh, it was very nice, very nice service. And then last night we had a <coughs> committee meeting here with Recycling and uh, garbage. <coughs> Thank you. Councillor Morio. Uh, a couple meetings this period. On February 26th, the uh, Protective Services Committee met. Um, with the fire chief reviewed the, the fire bylaw, some of the recommended changes and concerns that were brought forward, along with some more discussion on the R of Livingston Agreement. Um, the chair of the committee can report further on that. Um, February 26th of the afternoon, uh, the Valley in the Mountains uh, Committee met again. Um, minutes were shared with the rest of the council there yesterday. Uh, I've highlighted that the uh, tourism book, uh, we're doubling the amount being purchased this year uh, from 5000 to 10000 um, due to the lack of supply, more or less running out from the last order. Um, Advertising, advertising rates uh, for the ads in there uh, were reviewed and agreed upon and new rates were set on based on the quotes of what we were the purchase price of the 10,000 books divided or divided amount that there's a zero profit in the uh, advertising it was just the cost recovery aspect along with uh, Stacy Grindle will be updating the content and some pictures within the tourism guide those things, once they're ready, uh, will be disseminated um, throughout different tourism, tourism um, booths and outlets and things like that. So, and then last night, uh, the Transportation and Environmental Health Services Committee uh, met where we um, reviewed the RFP for the garbage recycling uh, collection proposals that were solicited um, through the RFP process. Um, we have uh, 
motion to deal with that later with the recommendation from the committee. <coughs> um, and depending on how that resolution goes, uh, depends if we can proceed or not with the uh, replacement um, of the, <coughs> continue on with the tender replacement of the uh, garbage trucks. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Councillor Gray. I, I don't have a lot to report other than what's in the recreation committee in some ways. Um, Rise has um, a submission for um, funding on an ongoing basis that should be coming. I, I actually expected it to be here for tonight, so I'm really surprised we don't have it yet. Um, it will be the same funding. Each organization has certain thoughts on that or each of the four organizations. Um, similarly, with the Recreation Commission, it was one of the at a meeting, uh, councillors, or uh, councillors, uh, Tony and Gloria were there with uh, the, uh, there was a proposal there for a new program at a cost of something in the order of $70,000 which would have meant each recreation commission um, or each member of the recreation commission would have to expend additional resources. Um, they also have a form of strategic plan, actually it might be the best of the three in terms of the preparatory work um, that hasn't been followed so far, <laughs> hasn't been used for anything and has no meaning. So um, we have a consistent theme at least one of the things that um, a recurring theme in all of these events and in all of the reports I hear is that, and, and I expect and Mr. Deputy Mayor, you'll be speaking to this more, that um, when we get to our planning meeting tomorrow, one of the things we should talk about is restricting what we do here to larger issues and finding a way of having two things which seem at first instance to be opposites but which in fact are complementary. Um, they are that we have our um, structures for funding and so on set off from us and so that that work can be done by others and we can have bigger picture ideas and that we be more focused in those groups so that we don't have three or four different people doing tourism, three or four different people doing economic development, and so on. And so, um, all of, as I said, the themes are the same, that we have plans that people don't look at again and follow, that we have multiple groups doing the same things or competing, and that we um, are unfocused in what we want to achieve. So I'm hoping that tomorrow we'll change that. That's my phone going off for reasons here. Mr. I apologize. Now I'm turning it off. I thought I had this one. Um, other than that, there are some issues coming up on this agenda, but I expect on future agendas that are going to require significant Thank you very much, Councillor Gray. Councillor White. Uh, 20th, we uh, had the safe house meeting, and, and, and the team there is trying to establish the relationship between health, finance, and justice relative to mental illness and, and drug abuse. And they're trying to uh, have meetings with the Minister of Health, Justice, and Finance simultaneously to talk about that. So it's a work in progress. We have significant health and mental illness issues in North Parkland where we're located. So they continue on six years and they're frustrated. Uh, Prairie Mountain Health, uh, again, we had the telehealth. Uh, things are moving forward, it would appear. Uh, sort of related, I went to the Elmer Charter and Friendship Center, one of their general meetings, and what a compliment to that community <coughs> group relative to the things they do for education, for social services, for parent-child. <coughs> and the thing that struck home to me at being a rural community is how some of the some of the people there were concerned of abuse of harvester cards by their own people 
and how that reflected negatively on them. And they were going to write a letter to uh, David Chartrand suggesting that perhaps some people shouldn't have harvester cards if they're going to abuse them. So I compliment uh, from that perspective. And the harm meaning uh, trying to reduce, mitigate methamphetamine issues which are significant in our valley. And then I had the pleasure of uh, Council Friesen and MLA uh, Wojcik doing the uh, presentation with Livingston. And, and that's a little bit of an aberration from what we had originally planned, but because of the health concerns, we moved that forward. It cost us $42.50 to buy the plaque. And uh, a woman of nearly seven decades of contributions to our community, Grace Livingston, was recognized. And thank you, uh, Councillor. And uh, Stacey Grindle was also a big help there. Following up on that, uh, we hope to have uh, Grace in a car at the uh, at the parade, the Magnolia Parade, as the citizen of the year, and Stacy's looking after that. But then uh, David and I, after a little uh, miscommunication on my part, uh, finally sat down the three of us with the fire chief and some other members of his team. And you have the chance, you have the changes. They've been forwarded to everybody for discussion. And uh, it's a pretty thorough gentleman, uh, Mr. Fedorchuk. He has some interesting data there. Then on the 27th, uh, Councilman Delaurier and myself met with Dr. Burnside and we looked at medical services uh, concerns, where we're going, and that seemed to follow up with the meeting tomorrow morning where we're trying to say what are the issues, how do we solve them, what's the plan. So, uh, what I also felt <coughs> involved from my perspective is I think we as a community have a significant responsibility to look at how we're retaining these young medical professionals. What are we doing? We've got 12 here, two are leaving soon, I don't know what soon means, in the near future. And uh, what have we done? Have we invited them to our homes? Have we invited them to our service club? <coughs> have the kinsmen invited them? Have the knights invited them? The elks invited them? And I know, in fact, that the lions and the kinsmen are going to hopefully make that happen very soon. So I think the retained perspective falls on us as community people to invite these young people to wherever to get them involved and active. On the 28th at the PMA to Medical Service meeting uh, and the G4 members, most of which will be here again tomorrow. And just to update the data, they're telling us there's 12 doctors here, two nurse practitioners and a methadone treatment. They have a pharmacist coming who will be training, uh, helping people with their programs for the drugs that they take, how to take them, when to take them, why not to take them. They will not be selling drugs. They have a clinical assistant lined up who is a uh, doctor, Dr. Ojo. But because of his medical training, he will have to stay as a clinical assistant. They have, uh, they talk about the feasibility study, dialysis. They have six days of dialysis now, which is a compliment to, to the uh, PMH. And they'll have a physician going to Benito in the near future, which I think is an, an excellent uh, idea. 8,730 clients using the clinic right now. They feel they have 16,000 in the, in the area that they can use. And a track from that's not talking about Yorkton and Dauphin and Nepal, which I believe we could attract from. So uh, I felt pretty positive meeting. Uh, I thank you, Councillor Deloria, for taking part in it. I had the recycle meeting last night. I compliment to Mr. Mario and his team. I some really neat ideas there, and I, was, I shared another really good idea this afternoon with you, uh, Your Worship. And just uh, for the sake of the council, I have no problem inviting council tomorrow at 8 o'clock in the morning. We have the uh, medical service team meeting with uh, the docs. Uh, and a miscellaneous thing, I would ask us to consider nudging our CAO, for, let you think about it anyway, uh, Mr. Poole. Post-council meetings, is it wise to maybe have a 10-minute quick chat with your team out there and say, hey, here's what the council met last night, here's the priorities they stressed, here's where we're going. So. They're aware also of what's happening. Crazy form, and there are no surprises. And I, I think similarly to a public works meeting, maybe zip over there at the coffee break one day. Say, hey, council met last night. You may not have the time to do that. I accept that, but I, I like that idea. Just brief updates for the people in the, in the field who do the, do the work, and then they don't get surprised. They don't feel left out. I thought that's it. Thank you. Thank you, <clears throat> Thank you Councillor White. Councillor Delorier. Um, had uh, the 28th had the District Rec and Parks and Rec Committee meeting. Um, was touched on already. Uh, last night had a uh, Planning District meeting. 
uh, uneventful except for the fact that I believe this is the last year for the contract with the CD to administer it and I know some time ago Terry had spoke of possibly us putting in a bid next time so uh, I don't know what the situation is in the office so you may want to have yep. a discussion with let, let him I guess put that back on his radar and get an opinion on whether he thinks that we have the manpower to handle that or the, or the uh, ability to do that so because that will be coming up here sometime in the next four or five months um, and then uh, after that we had the uh, transportation environmental committee meeting which has already been touched on um, the only other thing I wanted to make comment on and I know Mr. Ganita watches these and he doesn't miss a word. So I hope I don't get his back up against the wall or anything. But, and I know he, you guys can't, uh, about a month ago we had that meeting, you said trust us or, you know, basically let us do our thing and we're, we're back. I'm just, you know me, I'm having a hard time sitting on my hands. I, I, we're already into March and we haven't really seen any budget. Is, is there, I'm not asking him to give a date, but if you could maybe give us a timeline on when we might get to see something. The, the year in financial statements, he is going to struggle to get them in on time, which are due March 15th. Mm -hmm. So we are both on March 16th going to be tackling the budget. Okay. Uh, agreement. So I'll maybe be, early April we'll get a chance to... I would say the end of March. Well, I don't, I don't want to put that kind of pressure here. Yeah. I know Terry is watching everything I'm saying right now, so, <laughs> so I don't want to put no, pressure on him. I needed pressure, but just... And, it's been in the back of my mind or the front of my mind even, so I'm yeah. just a little bit worried. It like is, to... He knows that it'd be the end of March. It's what I said in January, so okay. we'll, we'll be trying for the end of March. Okay, excellent. Yeah. That's it for me. Thank you, Councillor DeLorean. Um, I guess for myself, um, it's been a, a, an opportunity for me to fill in uh, my <coughs> shoes while he's, he's away, so that's been um, very... Uh, learning for me and I'm very happy and proud to be accepting that role and, and filling in for him. Um, we did have a few meetings um, yes with um, with rise and we're I'm looking forward to tomorrow's planning meeting to discuss some options with you um, I think that will be a, a, a good, good opportunity to learn something and, and possibly look at um, how we spend our time and and how we can devote it to bigger and bigger bigger picture items um, like Councillor Gray had indicated um, other meetings that you all have touched on I was I was at at those ones um, I think that's uh, about all I have to say just uh, I have a lot on my plate right now with uh, filling in but I'm pretty excited and pretty proud to take that on Any other comments there? Can, can we move the issue of the discussion of the medical meeting tomorrow to the in-camera session? That's an agenda item? Well, it's, it arose from Councillor White's remarks, um, which was not unanticipated, but it's something that there are three reasons, as we all know, for matters to go into one, one is if they're a personnel matter, the other is if they are an outstanding lawsuit or something of that matter, and the third is if they're a policy or contractual matter that I think that should not be properly discussed in public. Mr. Paul, you will enter that in, or you will enter that in for me. Yeah. Okay, thank you. The, the only other comment I have is with respect to financial statements. I thought the, re the response with respect to financial statements um, about why we don't have them, uh, I think that's um, wrong. I don't know how better to put it. Um, for lack of a better word, our, our budget is the same as last year. Right? I mean, that's, you can use it and, because the budget changes. But what, not knowing where we are in terms of spending until a quarter of the year or a third of the year is, um, and I appreciate that we get the checks, but, but knowing where we are in the spending, spending cycle is help and in fact is necessary. And so I would prefer, 
and, and I, I'm, I'm fully willing for this year, it's the same as the budgeting process, which I can lay the board and so on. But going forward, it seems to me self-evident that we should be getting the financial statements to say this is what the expected budget is at least, and here's what the expenditures are so we know where we are in the cycle. Because uh, it, I don't anticipate it would be a problem this year. It looks like we're pretty prudent in the way we spend money. I don't think we have anybody who's going crazy. But if we did go off the tracks, we would be the ones who are remiss for not knowing it. And so I would rather we get the information. No, understood. And thanks for acknowledging that this is a off year. It is what it is. And you guys are as hard as you work as hard as you can. I'm not being critical. Okay, moving on. 7.4 Recreation Committee minutes. Resolve that the minutes from the February 28th, 2019. Recreation Committee meeting be received. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor Delore. Can uh, discussion please? I've lost them on my computer. The only, only comment I, I don't know where it is. I'm Robert Robert White, go ahead. I'm sorry, I thought you said go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, one of the concepts discussed was the possibility this, I quote, this would be no school rentals. I'm not sure who I should ask that question to. Is that a serious consideration? No. But it's not. Because that that would be a travesty in my mind. This one isn't, but this one is a serious consideration. But what the we are not suggesting that the school would not be entitled to rent from us. What we are suggesting is that that the school which gets an incredibly reduced rate on rentals, that the weird that there's some not necessarily a logical reason for that. That in fact um, rentals are rentals, and that, that the cost should be theirs. Now, they did raise at the Rec Swan Valley Recreation uh, District meeting the issue of things that they may contribute to our recreation piece that we need to look at. So, there may be a, a balance. One of the philosophical positions that we're moving in recreation, and I think this council needs to look at in all of its act activities, is that um, everything gets paid for on the basis of what it costs us. So, we know that there's a subsidy for. The pool. We know that there's a subsidy for the arena, but there needs to be a way of us reflecting that as a an actual revenue or an actual expenditure people people get. Just as there's a subsidy for garbage that we need to reflect, garbage pickup, I should say, not for garbage particularly, and and that we need to recognize those and hone in on how much we're subsidizing so that people have an understanding of what's being subsidized. Because what happens now is people just look at, and, and I won't use the school division per se. Per se I'll use Meyer Hockey so that I can equally offend everybody in town. Um, that that the cost of the arena is something like 22% of what we charge Meyer Hockey. Or maybe it's less than that. I can't remember the stats actually off the top of my head. It's in Patty's report. The point being that that everybody should understand what we're what we're doing. So when there's an increase and people say, well, you've increased our fees 10%, and, you know, the cost of living didn't go up that. But there's an understanding that what we're subsidizing is a block of money towards a group that says we're giving you this money so that you can participate. And and so when we're using our facilities, particularly, um, we need to, and, and it comes into the bigger picture of how we fairly have contribution agreements with the other municipalities and make sure that everybody pays a fair share of what the costs are, that we're not unfairly subsidizing <coughs> Costs of citizens of other municipalities if they're not contributing equally to both the maintenance operation and the capital costs of the operation of those facilities. Because we have some big capital costs potentially coming forward. A couple of million dollars in pool, and something between one and 15 million dollars in the arena. So that's what the point is. So it, it wasn't serious that there would be no that the school division wouldn't be allowed to rent. That's not the way it, it's worded badly. What it means is that the school division may choose not to because they are also squeezed for their budget. We have some, I have some thoughts on that. I have, unfortunately, I can't be at Thursday's meeting, so I'm going to send something to um, the school division on my thoughts on what their material is from their website. Um, because I think everybody's being squeezed, but the problem is that we're the ones who end up catching it both from the province, who is squeezing us on one side, and users were squeezing us on the other. And I suppose if there's a third side, um, the additional costs from suppliers and, and 
cost of staffing and, and whatever. Does that make sense? I hope that helps. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? I, I should have just added for that none of the final rates have come. Have come. We're going to have public meetings on particularly pool and particularly arena. We're going to do them separate because it's separate kinds of users. The users of the pool tend to be more individuals. The users of the pool tend to be more groups. And so we're going to have separate public meetings with respect to what the rate should be and how we should reflect those. Thank you, Councillor Green. That, that motion was carried. Moving on to new business, 8.8.1, Swan Lake Watershed District. I will read the resolution, we'll get it to the floor, and then we'll have discussion on that matter. Whereas the town of Swan River is currently a member of the Swan Lake Watershed Conservation, Conservation District, and whereas the Council of the Town of Swan River has reviewed the proposal for the Swan Lake Watershed District and is not in agreement to the appointment approach used to calculate municipal levies and whereas the council of the town of swan river would prefer using current portion land assessment values to determine the municipal levy therefore be it resolved that the council of the town of swan river approve the proposal for the swan lake watershed district and supports the continued membership membership in this program under the authority of the water watershed districts act however it is not in not in support of the appointment approach used to calculate municipal levies. If I can have a mover on that one. Which, Councillor, which one was it we do not support? Just, Councillor Morio made the motion, second by Councillor Delory, oh, discussion. I, 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 I want to second it, but I want a word change because I don't, uh, we're using the, what, what word did we use there? We used the, uh, Appointment, it, it should be apportionment. Wherever the word appointment is, it should be the word apportionment. Apportionment? Yes. I thought I read appointment in the, in no, the proposal. No, apportionment. Not in support of the apportionment. Yeah. yeah. Very last. It, 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 I think it appears twice in the resolution. Where, where's the resolution in here? Um, 8.1. 8. 8. It is. There's one value watershed district proposal, and there's two draft resolutions in there. If you if you click on the very the very first right by eight point one, it'll bring up the resolution. And if you refresh apportionment. Okay, I can second it now that it says apportionment. Thank you. Um, Discussion, Councillor Gray. Well, okay. Um, I, the I'm offended, candidly, by the proposal, what was sent from the Swan Lake Watershed District. Um, firstly, it's using um, manipulated numbers. So that, for instance, it says, this is what you got out of being part of the Swan Valley Watershed District, but here's what you had to pay, and there's a small difference, that's true. Except that the Swan Valley Watershed District gets a block of extra money by virtue of our, particip by virtue of our participation, so which Presumably, if we were sand alone, we would get the same proportion of the money. And so the result is that um, we actually have contributed between what we what they get from our participation and what the government gives them almost um, three times, more than three times, uh, let's see, no, not quite, it's two and a half times what we've contributed, 250% of what we've contributed of what they've given us, I should say. We've contributed 250% more. So what we've, what we've gotten, they got that much, that much again, and that much half again, over and above, paying for everything they paid for. So that's the first thing. The second thing is they gave us two resolutions. Okay, the resol and, and our resolution doesn't say either of them. But they gave us two re resolutions as if there were only two choices. There are not only two choices. The truth is we are not required to withdraw from participation in the Swan Valley um, Watershed District. I find it equally offensive that, that the current structure of the um, district in terms of 20 members 
is based on land area, um, which means we get one person, even though we contribute, which is 5%, even though we we're supposed to contribute something like 30% uh, of the money. That's offensive on its face. Which brings me to the last thing. Um, representation should be based at least in part on how much you contribute. And so uh, the whole of the structure is wrong. So uh, we should, I know that that's been the historical way, and that's the reason they did it. They just did it that way, and, and the town said, well, we don't really care. We'll, we'll just go along with it. But um, it's, it's, and I don't want to, it's part of a larger piece for me. It's not just about this. It's about the whole way we interact with, the, with the municipalities. And I, I don't mean to be harsh, but the other municipalities and their members seem intent in this kind of piece to take advantage of the great areas of the town of Swan River for no good reason. So I, I, I don't necessarily agree with the proposal say that because I don't necessarily agree with the process for deciding how members are selected or the board, the reprocessing of the board. None of that seems to have been particularly well thought through except for the internal purposes of the Swan Valley Water, Swan Lake Watershed District. Um, and secondly, because of the allocation, which, and I think our process for allocation, I, I think that there is a negotiation to be had. This is the problem. I actually think that we should be looking at a negotiation that balances some of this out because I don't necessarily think we want to do it just on land value assessment. I think that there are better, there may be better, better overall processes. And if the, but if, if the other municipalities insist, then I think this is our only alternative, which is we're still a member, we're entitled to be a member as a matter of law, and we are not required to um, be part of the municipal levy or of the, of the levy in the process they wanted. In fact, the default position is the one that we're proposing. So uh, while I, I agree with the resolution, there are two parts. One is I think that this whole process needs to be reconstructed, and that should be reconsidered. But more importantly, I, I think we should uh, suggest that there is that this is the time for them to begin, for us to begin a negotiation so that we can get something that everybody can live with better than us forcing a provincial government um, requirement on our neighbors. And I don't know if that's been too confusing. That was a little bit all over the map. And I, I particularly appreciate that Council Councilor Delorier was at a meeting. Um, the, the odds stood 19 to 1, and and and, and uh, he did as well as he could, given that it was 19 to 1. I mean, I, I, I find it ironic that, actually, I guess we're down to one representative, because we now have two. Uh, we, still, we still have a citizen appointee, so we still have two people in there. <coughs> regular proposal. Yeah. Uh, in their proposal, I believe they we get two. We're only allowed one, but we're we get two under the, in, an internal agreement. Yeah. Okay. I I, I just missed over that Sam. Councillor Delore, any more to add? Since you were at that, that meeting, anything that you want to address or discuss? I guess there there probably is maybe a negotiation to be had. Um, for sure in the context of, of the larger negotiation of all the different pieces, what, whether that can be done before the Mar March 31st deadline that this has to be in by, I, I doubt that. Um, but should we, as, municipal, as a municipality, say we don't agree to the apportionment, then the default is, is the uh, most current land assessment, but there will be, would be nothing stopping us from coming to an agreement on right. the four of us six months from now and saying, Okay, this is what the law says, but is, is the problem really going to stop us if we decide John pays eight and we pay ten, or whatever we whatever we decide to work it out? Overpay. Yeah. So, so I, I think this is as good as, we as good as we can get for now. But I think with this, don't doubt that we're not going to ruffle some feathers just by doing this. I, I think there's a lot there's a lot of expectation that we agree to the proposal as it was put forth. So I, I, if we're fine with ruffling feathers, which 
I think all of us are on about at some point to have ruffled feathers, but uh, if we're fine with it, then uh, mm -hmm. that's the way it goes. So, Council Bob, right? Council Bob. Um, so, so I'm looking at like the proposal here, and under section C says calculating municipal contributions, and we're given two options under the Watershed Districts Act, which is option one is one more or less what we're proposing is using the current portion land assessment versus the option two is what they're using the portion where predetermined percentages are using based on an old 2012 assessment. So, so they, the, the act for their main levies specifies one of two uh, options and we're proposing one versus that's not what the agreement from what you reported back um, is they want to go with option two. They want to go with the, the apportionment, right. yes. So and, but and the the province says that all the partners have to agree, or if right. they can't agree, yeah. then, then it goes defaults. Well, then it defaults to, to assessment. Okay, and that's yeah, so if so based on our resolution, if we pass that, we're not agreeing <coughs> to force a default back to the yes portion. Any further discussion? I get. I guess, should we pass this resolution wherever this goes? I would encourage all the rest of you to attend whatever <coughs> meetings that would come out of the CD for this so to make our case. So, so we appear as a unified front. I guess. Okay. Further discussion? Would anybody like me to reread the no. the resolution? No. I'll call the question. Recorded vote, please. All in favor, it's, or it's a recorded vote, please, Mr. Poole. All in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried. Unanimously. Yeah, um, 8.2 Handyman Service. I have nothing. I was just asked by a uh, council to add to the agenda. <coughs> I didn't have a resolution made. So just for discussion purposes. Well, you raised an issue and we got a letter back about yep. some of the issues. Yep. Um, it was part of the, I don't think it needed to ask Yeah. based on that letter. I think so. um, We got back a letter from uh, Mr. Benita about uh, about the fact that we're already pretty much maximizing the the costs as best as he has can can determine it. With very little adjustment, so that was part of it. Um, the second was your concern about um, attendance at, at the church, and there was a response on that. Um, I, I'm not sure that I, I necessarily agree, but um, I think. Um, My understanding is that, that there had been attendance at the church for a long period of time, and so I'm not sure why one, why we would have a change in the situation. That's my that's one of my concerns. Right. The other is a long-standing concern of mine, which is that we have um, restricted service, and so I, I certainly I think that's it's going to come to our community. Is that where Andy Bat's coming? I was going to the recreation and cultural services. Right. And so um, I just refer the full issue of the handicap because we've had it come to the table to our committee uh, because there are a number of things I'd like to discuss about, about that. And we'll come back with a recommendation. So if you just make sure Patty puts it on our next agenda. Yeah. <laughs> Councillor Moria? So with that, Councillor Gray and some of the stuff that's going to committee, and stuff, I know there's been some discussion by some individuals and stuff like that. An option of looking at it where the handy event instead of the town operating it, maybe get give it over some contract or book an RFP to service clubs or some other entity to exactly. look at it, lock, stock, well, and barrel. Yeah, there's two issues. One is is an issue that where there's been change in service for a little not at all clear. But there's also the hours of operation, there's a bunch of things where we may be in a position to um, fund something but not do it. That's part of the, the theme that I think we this council will start to take on, which is. We don't need to actually own stuff. We just need to make sure that things happen. Perfect. Thanks. So yes, that's exactly what we're looking for. Thank you. Thank you, councillors. Moving on, 8.3 Thompson Trade Show. 
resolved that the town of Swan River support the Chamber of Commerce in representing the Valley by attending the Thompson Trade Show with a contribution to the amount of 2500 moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor White. Further discussion? This is their last year of doing it, right? That was my understanding, is that, 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 that this was the last year that would be supposed to be done and that there, we were, because we're looking at it an overall different process. That's correct, yes. Any further discussion on that one? Just to, just to comment, uh, grab another 20, 30 families from Thompson have moved into our valley in the last half dozen years for whatever reason, and, and I suspect, and only our data, that having that team go up there with Thompson people has, has helped make that happen. I don't think that's even a question. Where? I don't think that's even a question. It's self evident. I agree. Anything further, councillors? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried. Just a rising of that, um, we talked with um, Stacy about whether or not they would do flip flop. Um, and she said, well, as long as we had the resources and we could find people willing to go and do it. Um, I think flip flop's next weekend. Um, I'm going to suggest that we communicate with her uh, personally. I think flip flop is a, is a Councilor White wrote a uh, compelling reason. This would be a good year for us to do film flood. Despite the fact we go back and forth, this would be a good year for us to do film flood. And I think it's two thousand dollars or so well spent if we spend if we go to film flood as well. But you know, we need not just us but other community groups. So I think we should correspond with Stacy and see if they could organize that as well. And that we would be receptive to a further application. And uh, well, I open that. I think I agree again completely with Councilor. Mine, I forgot their name because they change. Hudson Bay. HBM Hudson Bay has formally announced, there's been a story going around forever, we're going to quit next year, but they've made a formal announcement they are shutting down. So I think that gives us a little more uh, emphasis to do it now rather than later. Further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion's carried. Eight point four. Um, the Thirteenth Avenue North speed reduction initiatives. Uh, the resolution reads: Whereas Thirteenth Avenue North and Swan River has recently been paved. And with the sm smoothness of fresh pavement in combination with 13th Avenue North, not ha North having no traffic control from 2nd Street North to Ross Street, an increase in vehicle speeds have been noticed by residents along 13th Avenue. Therefore, be it resolved that the Town of Swan River Public Works Administration examine ways to reduce vehicle speeds on 13th Avenue North, including but not limited to the installation of a four way stop at 13th and 3rd. Street intersection. Further be it resolved that Public Works Administration report on their findings to the Transportation and Environment Committee with required bylaw changes on their preferred recommendation including included in their report. Moved by Councillor Delorier, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? I guess I'll speak on this. I asked for this to be included in the resolution. I had a couple of residents on that street come forward to me in addition to, you know, I'm sure we all have anecdotal evidence of near misses that happen. And I know there's a history at that intersection and I'm not saying what the solution is. I know, I know I'm know, i not a traffic control expert, so that's why I, I guess I wanted to uh, have Public Works take a look at it, see if there is, a, maybe there isn't a problem. I, I'm not, maybe, you know, sometimes problems can be, I don't want to say in your head, but, but they can, they might not be as serious as they, so I guess if you, if Public Works can look at it and uh, come back with a report on, on what should be done, if anything, on there, we will. Councillor <coughs> Gray. Um, okay. I, I'm not sure what the problem is, that's, because the near misses are about the intersection, not about other things, and there are people who back on to the, to the street. Um, all of them. Let's see. 
three of us are old enough to remember when the street ran the other way. That that there was an inter there was were stop signs on 13th, and council, for whatever reason, in its infinite wisdom, 30 years ago, maybe more, changed that and decided that the thoroughfare was going to be 13th. Um, I, I will tell you this: I'm not much for four-way stops. I, I don't think they're, they're particularly helpful. I think that they create problems, um, and and I don't know that they add particularly to safety and and especially in a town with more slower drivers than we have ever had, that it becomes more of a challenge. And so I, I, I think we have to be very careful about just reacting to individual impetuses for small things, that, that um, this is the kind of thing, if we're going to do a study, we should actually do a study on, on flow and figuring out why we're doing certain things and where we should have traffic control devices and how traffic flows because I'm not at all certain that we have, I'm not, I would say of all the places that we have a problem, 13th is, the, is far down my list of the places we have problems for traffic flow. Councillor Friesen? I live on 3rd. Oh yes. And I don't know if it's so much traffic as kids, the kids walk down that street going to to the high school and back, and a lot of them don't pay any attention to traffic coming. So if there's a stop sign, maybe it might save a life. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm just no, I'm not. I'm just guessing. You mean stop sign going on third? Yes. Thir on third. Yes. On um, there's a stop sign on third. Right. It's the thirteenth that's f full open from second yeah. all right. the way to Ross, yeah. and they do gun ho it down there because it is nice and smooth, and that corner is where the kids. That are coming from a lot of that oh, area. The corner. Yeah, they walk across that street, and I don't think it's uh, wrong to investigate it. I'm not saying it has to be done, but I see no problem in having a look at it. Well, Just my thoughts. While they're, the great. while they're doing it, they look at once again the speed zones in in uh, school zones and go through a more unusual practice of not when schools in session. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion's carried. Eight point five recycling and solid waste collection proposals. Whereas the town of Swan River received pr proposals from multiple companies to provide waste and recycling collection and recycling processing service. <clears throat> and whereas the Transportation Committee has reviewed and analyzed multiple options to provide waste and recycling services to the residents and businesses of Swan River and have made their recommendation to <coughs> Council to enter into agreement with Otten Bright Sanitary Services, also known as OSS, to provide only recycling, collection, and processing services within the Town of Swan River. Therefore, be it resolved, the Town of Swan River accept and approve the, the requested proposal from Otten Bright Sanitary Solutions for recycling, collection, and processing services on the condition the insurance and performance bond requirements are satisfied. Moved by Councillor Morio. Second, Councillor Delorier. Discussion. I can speak to that. Councillor Morio. Uh, so the transportation committee um, met last night after um, the town put out the request for proposals uh, for recycling with options for the uh, garbage collection for both residential and commercial. Uh, collections. Um, there was a lot of debate analyzing back and forth as the various options um, to deal um, with garbage. Uh, the recycling collection aspect of it, I think it was pretty self-evident um, that we had to go in this direction as the proposals that we got were very similar just in difference in cost and price. Um, the Lions did not submit uh, a proposal for recycling so um, that left us with looking at two outside communities for recycling collection. Um, 
the rest of the uh, debate and analyzing and considerations with the garbage collection uh, for both commercial and residential. Um, there was a lot of pros and cons, a lot of budget analysis going on for that as to what we can afford, what could be expected from the rate payer to pay regarding on garbage and recycling and things like that. Um, at the end of the night, um, due to budgetary restraints and rate payer concerns regarding, regarding uh, rate price issues and stuff like that, um, the recommendation was that uh, the budget or the, the garbage collection aspect of it was not included in this proposal and we can continue on with that process um, with the town still looking at the garbage, uh, both commercial and residential, and only deal with uh, the uh, recycling aspect of both commercial and residential. Uh, but it was a good discussion. There was a lot of good visionary stuff, good ar our arguments, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, basically we're leaving the door open where we can reanalyze the garbage collection at a later date when the situation is budgetary and more consultations and view conversations with ratepayers as to what they would like to see, and, uh, but for another date. So. Any further discussion? Mr. Poole, your recommendation as well? Yes. Yes, to All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion is carried. Um, this was for a three year proposal? Yes. And, and we chose three years because? Uh, we want the, the landfill contract is up next year. We want to do a one-year contract with that, so we'll have to do a two-year contract to have them end at the same time. And we want to do a one-year contract with this for Well, yeah, I guess we, we figured we wanted, the, we wanted the best price now, but there's an argument on the other side of that as well. I, I just, I, have, <coughs> I, I didn't really go back to voting for it. But um, I, I have real reservations about farming stuff out to um, So I, I think we need to review this um, and review the contract before they sign it, which is I have some thoughts on. I think we don't want to do it. Have they, have they set a copy of the contract? Uh, no. No, they have to fill in their required insurance and bonding either CEO or company that submitted the bonding or the So that contract will go to the general governance for review then? Or to the this committee for review? I, I, I don't know I don't care. I, I would assume it would go to administration and, and our lawyer can take a look at it and Yeah. I, 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 mean, just, wonder, gonna, I just wonder so whether we want to consider whether there's a Ability for us to off it would have to be one exit clause. That, that's all I'm asking is, is can we make sure that our agreement provides for an exit clause, an early exit? I don't know what whether that would impact your that or not, but um, I'd like to ask to explore that because I have thoughts on on a broader context as well. Anyway, it may cause it may cause us more trouble, more causes more trouble than it's worth. If that's the case, I, I don't want to. Anyway, you know what I'm saying. Sure. When is the uh, anticipated start date for them? Uh, what's well, that? Told us if we get approval tonight, uh, they can be set up by May 15th. May 15th. Okay. So you got approval tonight. So there we go. Looks like May 15th. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but we are going to make uh, an early termination clock. Moving on to 8.6, regular council meeting date change. Res oh. <laughs> Resolve the March 19th regular scheduled council meeting be rescheduled to take place Tuesday, March 26th at 7 p.m. in council chambers. It was moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion, <laughs> Councillor Gray. That's fine. It doesn't make any difference. 
counselor. Just making sure Jeremy knows. Are you paying attention? You're okay with it? Yeah. You <laughs> I don't have to go down the streets for that. <laughs> All those in favor? <laughs> Opposed? Motion's carried. <coughs> on to 9.1 fire services Livingston agreement resolved the town of Swan River said notice to terminate the fire pro fire protection agreement with the RM of Livingston moved by C Councillor White seconded by Councillor Friesen discussion Councillor Mario um, Mr. Poole, you can confirm that uh, you've been in contact with the Yard of Livingston and they've confirmed that they have secured with the Pelly municipality that uh, coverage will be provided by them for that as area? Of, as of right now. Oh, that's what he stated right now. That was good. So, but the, this, according to the agreement, we're not. We still were giving them six month notice, so we still will be providing uh, services for six months unless there's a mutual agreement with an exact end date within that six months. Further discussion? All those in favor? All those opposed? Um, Abstain? The motion is carried. I might move through it. The letter from the Moving on to accounts 10.1. Be it resolved the accounts that the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts, checks number 23984 to number 24050 for a total of $98,061.76. 77 cents payroll account checks number 4405 to 4411 for a total of $100,678.22. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Councillor Morio. Uh, Mr. Poole, check number 24015 to Moscow, Moscow Mechanical Limited for a uh, thermostat at 6th Avenue lift station. Um, isn't that, that's the one we just refurbished, so why are we paying for these pricing thermostat? Uh, that, that is, that was at our request. So there was, we changed out, basically we wanted uh, a dial thermostat in there, the one that we had, we couldn't change very well. So it was a request from our guys and, and we made the change in order to... So this was part of the RFP? This was, was this is going on our oper operations okay. station, <clears throat> not part of the capital. Councillor White? The explanation for 24045 is Panic hardware and the veterans all front end entrance. What does that mean? I just need to, I didn't understand that. 045? 24045. Panic bars hardware. To get out. Pardon? It's the push bars to get out. That's oh, what yes. that is? Yes, yeah. that's a push bar replacement. That's what they cost. Obviously, $1,200, $1,300. No, actually, they just inflated the number. Right. <laughs> of course, that's uh, they got. Got. <laughs> um, 24046, Taylor yes. McCaffrey. Um, Thirteen hundred dollars, roughly, for a review of the uh, contract award. I'm glad to see that we're getting contracts reviewed. But oh, no, that's not what that was. That was the review was of the fact when we had to buy yeah. notice of notice of motion. That was for, oh, okay. That was for November. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But uh, I did have the same thing flagged because it's part of you know, everyone here got the legal fees. Um, but the, and we spent, I think we budgeted five thousand dollars for legal fees last year. We spent like a hundred and five thousand dollars. So uh, I think we really need to look at that. There are three things. Firstly, uh, I was wrong. I want to because people have been watching this. 
I was wrong in how much we spent on the lawsuit. I think it's closer to $30,000 or $35,000. Mr. Poole will correct me. Um, but I must have added uh, one of Taylor McCaffrey's bills into theirs. Um, but we have spent a lot of money. And so this is one where I would have expected we would have said it to <coughs> in the future before yes. we talked about that. Yeah. Um, and then um, I think we do need to look at our representation with respect to um, personnel matters because that was a lot of money for what I think we got. <laughs> And we've got another year, we got, that's one the problem for one year mm -hmm. cycle, we'll have the same thing again. So we really need to decide. That should go to governance to talk about who we're going to have for council. Further discussion on checks? They're always so well done. What, what can you say? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion's carried. Um, oh, okay. That there is something that <coughs> caused the lawsuit. Never mind. I, I just, my brain went into the neutral for me. I apologize. Yeah. Moving on to 10.2. Had to uh, unpaid amount, or to add unpaid amounts to taxes. <coughs> Whereas under section 2502, uh, two, clause E of the Municipal Act, municipality may for municipal purposes use municipal equipment materials and labor to carry out private works on private property and whereas under subsection 252 uh, 1 clause a, a municipality exercising powers in the nature of those referred to in clauses 252 b 2 b c and e may set terms and conditions in respect of users including setting the rates or amounts of deposits, fees, and other charges, and charging and collecting them. And whereas under section, under subsection 252.2, a charge referred to in clause 1A may be collected by the municipality in the same manner as a tax may be collected or enforced under this act. And whereas sufficient time has been allowed for payment for such outstanding amounts as listed below, Therefore, be it resolved that each of the following unpaid amounts be added to the corresponding property tax roll and collected in this manner. Do I read, should I be reading those out, Mr. Poole? Or uh, just not the names. We can address the amounts if you want. Okay. Council can just we, we know the amounts. I don't think we need to add them. Okay. It's a public meeting. It doesn't add anything to our resolution. Okay. For, if, if, does the resolution include? Um, costs and uh, additional co any additional costs or interest. We cannot add interest to uh, taxes. If it goes to court, we won't get the interest. So Terry decided not to put it in there. So why would we not get interest if we went to court? Because then in our bylaw it says we cannot include. It. it doesn't say we cannot include interest. It doesn't say that we can include interest. He explained that to me today. <coughs> There's one that uh, the main one. So we should move this first and then have the okay, discussion sorry, on yeah, it. I apologize, Mr. Mayor. Be it further resolved that notices be sent to the property owners detailing the amounts being added to the taxes and advising that interest will be will occur on set amounts in the same manner as for unpaid property taxes effective April 1st, 2019. Moved by. Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Delorier. Discussion, Councillor Gray. See, I'm, I'm frustrated by that. I, I don't understand. Firstly, I, I don't necessarily agree with the interest rate anyway, but um, and there's some wording that needs to be fixed. But but why would we put that on our um, invoices if we don't intend it? And, and have we collected 1.25% per month from other people? Because we have, the idea that we would collect it from people who came in and paid, but they just paid a month or two late, and we would charge them 1.25%. But somebody who actually makes us go to the trouble of having a resolution, adding to the taxes and collecting, we're going to give them a discount? I don't understand. It was a question today, and, and Terry's answer was, uh, because if it is fought, we will lose the interest. So obviously we need to research that answer. But, uh, but what's the 
aliens. Apparently, if it goes to court, we, we will not get the aliens. We can just look at the name now going Counselor Florian. And that's because of we, have, so we need to change our bylaw to, to reflect that. All of them that say that we can collect through municipal taxes. <clears throat> so uh, he, he did have a call into Wendy Wolf Municipal Government to confirm this, but uh, his decision was to collect what was clearly. You see, I, I, unless there's something in the municipal act or something that I don't know, and I haven't looked at it, the, act goes in. the question has about it. Okay, because, because quite candidly, I'm pretty unhappy with that idea. Because if you put on a statement that this is the interest of any charge, normally people don't pay it, and that becomes an amount that's payable. If you don't put it anything on and then try to collect it later, you're entitled to your bank borrowing rate, as far as I know, yeah. uh, or to the Queen's Bench Rules rate, depending on the rule of the court. But I, I can't imagine a court wouldn't allow us interest. I guess we could, uh, we never did receive word back from the province uh, today. We, we could table this. Council Dorian, board The mover and the seconder are okay with this being tabled to the to the next <coughs> council meeting. I have a question. Council of Mario. Um, looking through these invoices, um, Mr. Poole and stuff like that, Is it a delay in processing like invoices through this office? Because I know there's some other instances where there's ratepayers in the town that are waiting for the invoice from the town office, and due to our office situation, um, it's definitely a big delay compared to what's normal. And I find it hard to believe that these individuals, um, especially for connections and stuff like that, um, when you're building a three hundred thousand dollar home or whatever, um, you're going to negate paying. Fifteen hundred or two thousand dollar water connection. Rate. Uh, they have been sent statements. Uh, and sent, do they send them the dates that are on the statements? Every month. So in December, January. But uh, as in my ten years here, it is it is very common for homeowners to to let it go to their taxes. So this is not uncommon to me. I, if the owner if the owner has received the statements. They didn't pay, goes on taxes. <clears throat> so the owner can, I guess, we prefer that we sent the statements. So, follow up question that some of these that they're, um, since these people have um, outstanding invoices with the town regarding these, how would that affect any future building permit or request for water sewer installs? For future properties that they have in development, uh, can we say uh, can we deny them connection, um, like do the install on a on a new home or whatever? If they still have outstanding invoices like of, of a similar connection, um, since since we have the power to to use uh, use our bylaws to add to taxes in the case they don't pay their taxes, we're going to get the property, but. That's what the whole point of adding to taxes is, right? So we, but we can't deny them connection to water or anything because they haven't paid a previous bill. Can we? Well, when somebody has been. We, 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 but this, this, these are new connections here. These are new, like, some of these are new homes. They're not even lived in yet. We, we, would, we would have dealt with that. Uh, I don't know if we would do it. For this instance, but it would be any further building permits would be denied. But we would have to get a resolution from the council that that, that would have to happen. But uh, I know that we've done that, but not for a water and sewer amount payment. We have denied building permits based on not conforming to zoning bylaws. Right. Any further discussion? Council Dorian, board member Ten point two will be tabled to our next council <coughs> meeting. Moving on to 11.1, the second. No, I think we were going to also send that the bylaw to um, governance because we want to get it cleared up. Well, let's hear what the province has to say on that. And I guess if we do need to change our bylaws, I guess bring forth every bylaw that we assign things to taxes out of, and we'll have to change them all. So, so I guess we'll 
the ball will be in, in your court, Mr. Poole, as far as hearing back from the province once you hear back, and then I guess we'll have a committee meeting to start making changes to the bylaws. Yeah. The second reading on the on bylaw 12 2018 fire protection and emergency services resolved that bylaw 12 uh, 2018 the fire protection and emergency services bylaw be read a second time moved by <coughs> councillor morio second by councillor white discussion all those in favor Opposed? Abstain? Councillor? <laughs> the motion is carried. Um, uh, I refresh my reason for the province and concern, but some of them, and most of them, some, many of them were addressed, some of them weren't. So I, it, it's fine. It, it, it's not offensive, it's just kind of a challenge. It, um, Councillor? Yeah. If you can outline to the committee what the outstanding thing is, and we'll address them for the third reading. Because we may have missed some of them, what you were mentioning at the last. No, it's babbling on and on and on. Yeah, so it, it, it was actually two times ago. Yes. That's why I was asking where's the original changes, because of, uh, there were some changes um, that I. Because we can get, the, there is a uh, one of these versions that has all the tra track changes okay. on one send document. Me, send me that, and then I can. Okay, I'll get you my thoughts were. Uh, the chairman of the committee wants to get the fire chief to send you the version that has all four versions on one in, in color Perfect. track. Thank you. That would be fair. And then you can respond with yours, and then you can get them cleaned up. There's four of you. Uh, Whatever. However many changes there are, what I want is the differences between the current final draft and the original draft, because there was some things that I had some challenges with. And I will say, I. I'm not, I, again, that's one of those things where I think that, that committee in due course needs to look at the costs at the end because the cost really needs to be, um, this is recreation, needs to say we're going to start looking at what the total cost is so people have a picture so that when fire protection is there, uh, you know, I don't know if we can get a pumper truck with all the fixings and people for $1,800, whether that's a, a fair In reason. the cost we did from the original to what it is yeah. now, a lot of it was changed to the actual cost. Okay. Uh, I didn't see that in the notes, so I, that was one of my concerns for sure. Yeah, that was one of the first versions where it was like nominal five hundred dollars, right. and stuff like that. Those were changed to actual costs. So what we had, so yes, yeah, there, there's some wording in some of those that, that is a problem. But okay, we can fix them. Mm -hmm. It's not. Thank you, Thank you Councillor Morio. Moving on at twelve. Um, notice of motion. that we resolve that the pursuant to section 152.3 of the Municipal Act Council to go into committee and close the meeting to the public for personnel update legal issues medical services meeting moved by Councillor Delorier, second by Councillor Friesen. All those in favor? Opposed? And the original draft. Motion carried. 